I have a whole lot of questions to ask you, but I think with the book, reading the book, of course there were some elements that were obviously you, that you took from your life. For most of us, we were our own best friend and our own worst enemy. And I wanted to talk about that process, which I think is especially important for women who are often, you know, I believe encouraged to be our own worst enemy in terms of how um, we are asked to take on perfectionism, physical perfectionism, you know, this, this whole thing right now with black women, you know, successful unmarried black women. It's like, so you would rather we be out on the street and then we'd be more acceptable. It's like, you can't win for losing, you know? And then if you're married, is he cheating on you? You know, it's like, everything is drama. It's like, you know what? Just all of us have our walk in life and we just have to walk it. I was going to ask you that about your blog that you wrote about um, kind of it being open season on black women. Yeah. I mean, this world is set up to profit from conflict because you can sell products to people who are unhappy. When I think about issues like the, the way black women are portrayed, I think about who's invested in black women's happiness or unhappiness. And that was really what I was talking about in the piece is that there's an investment in black women seeming unhappy because it makes other people feel better about themselves if you have a twisted mind. Mm -hmm. But so many people are twisted and they can only be happy if someone else is unhappy. And I'm not going to be the fall guy for that. I'm sorry. You know, uh, you know, I may not be happy all the time, but I'm not going to be like miserable just so that you can be happy. <laughs> Amen. I know. I, know. You know? Exactly. <laughs> I first discovered you many years ago. I was a producer, television producer at the time in a small market and you were working for ABC News. Mm -hmm. And I looked at you and I thought, oh my goodness, she has locks or braids you had at the it's time. Braids back then. Yeah. yeah locks braids now. back then. I mean, and you were, you looked like me, you were my size and I can't describe what that meant for me at that time, but I guess it makes sense that you are very comfortable in who you are because of how you grew up and your parents. You know, the fact that I have gone up and down in weight and struggled with it publicly, you know, it is what it is, but I, but I also like at the time, for example, when I was at ABC, I wasn't particularly happy because I felt like I, it was impossible for me to kind of be the typical ABC person. And of course, I mean, you know, because it's a very, it's a very tough environment where the more, the more normative you are, the more airtime you get. Mm -hmm. And so you had to really fight for airtime. And I sort of, I'd gotten, I guess, a bit complacent or spoiled. And I was used to being valued for what I brought to the table in a way that I wasn't at ABC. But also people, you have to remember Anderson Cooper was at ABC and he left. Yeah. Lisa Ling was at ABC and she left. Yeah, a lot all of, of you were at the same time. Sort of yeah. Non-traditional careers mm -hmm. in journalism who have their little bit of their own thing or a little more quirky than, you know, like the typical correspondent, they left. And, and what I had to learn from that experience was that not all, not all, it's not a failure if you try something and it doesn't suit you. That was what was so beautiful about you being on ABC News for me was that you didn't fit that mode. And I felt like, wow, they are, they're investing in Faria Chidea and she does not fit the mold. And that's great. I also had to learn so much about, you know, my expectations about how I fit into workplaces. You know, sometimes you fit in perfectly, sometimes you don't. And I'm very glad to hear that I was useful to you in some way in, ter in terms of having that position. You, you were, and I'm sure you were to many other women as well. Maybe not even in the business, but just seeing you and ha seeing your presence and your point of view. I know that you say that you've, you've um, dealt with image issues, you dealt with bulimia, but there is something innate in you that still um, holds close to you who you are and your authentic self. Yeah. And how do you do that? How do you do that? I mean, so many of us have issues with that. Well, I guess, I guess it's more of, um, I mean, I think, I think the short answer is that, that the other options don't work for me.